Welcome back to Foxhole's Black Report. Well, there's a guest column in Variety magazine that's causing quite the conversation. Indeed. Now, the article is titled Black Equity Television, Why Paramount Global Should Turn BET Into a Community-Owned Network. This comes as talks about the future of the network seem a bit unsure as the potential buyers have changed several times. And here to discuss the article more in depth is Senior Vice President of the Hollywood NAACP Bureau and author of the article, Kyle Bowser. Welcome to Foxhole's Black Report, brother. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Oh, indeed. It's good to have you. All right, Kyle, so let's talk about the inspiration, what prompted you, you know, even though it might be a little plain and clear, what prompted you to write this particular article? I guess what prompted me to write the article was actually inspiration um, from a whole nother realm. Mm. In the world of sports, we have seen a model where the community owns an asset that the community really supports in, in large part. I'm talking about the Green Bay Packers. In 1923, that team was on the verge of bankruptcy. In an effort to, to save the franchise, they decided to offer shares of the team to the local residents, the taxpayers of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Today, that team is worth $4.25 billion, mm. and it is owned by more than 350,000 residents of the city. So that model, I think, resonated with me when I read that Paramount was considering the sale of BET. I also read that Tyler Perry and Byron Allen and Diddy and, and a, a partnership made up of 50 Cent and Shaquille O'Neal and Kenya Barris we're all considering uh, the purchase of that asset. And I think all of them are worthy and should be given the opportunity to make their run. Um, and I think all of them would be very committed to making sure that the network um, is positioned in our favor, in our community's favor. However, I thought it was also worthwhile for us to at least investigate the possibility of the community itself owning BET, much like the residents of Green Bay, Wisconsin owning the football team. I really appreciate I your that. reference to, to the Green Bay Packers. Um, you know, that was sold back in 1923, and today more than 350,000 residents of Wisconsin share in that $4.25 billion asset. So that's huge. Can you talk to us a little bit about some other examples of what this could look like, given that there are so many high profile, you know, uh, black entertainers that are making a bid for this? You know, would NAACP itself look to have a stake in? black equity television possibly listen i think what's really important is the idea that we as a community have a greater appreciation for the contribution that we make uh, to what is ultimately referred to as mainstream culture and once we really appreciate that contribution i think we start to think more intelligently about our stakeholder interest in that contribution so we create something uh, it catches on it there's a there's a sort of a viral um, evolution of that thing that we've created. And then you lose count of the origins of, of that thing, whatever it might be. Um, and I think we need, to, we need to record the origins of these creations. And then say, listen, because we are the creators of that, we should have some interest in its exploitation as it moves through the chain. Yeah, getting into the weeds uh, just a little bit, how would you go about uh, governing this particular uh, community who would come together and own it? Would there be some sort of kind of, you know, requirement or could anyone just be a part of this, this community, this ownership, if you will? Well, let's first be clear. I'm not talking about a publicly traded company. I'm talking about a, a community owned company, right? Mm -hmm. And so as the owners of this company, it would be incumbent upon us to also make sure that we have an excellent board of directors which should be comprised of people who have vast experience in business and in the media industry, um, as well as uh, the best management staff that we can put together. People who can actually have the day-to-day -day responsibility of running this, this asset. Um, and I think if we do that, we can sit back as owners and monitor their progress and from time to time, if it's necessary through you know annual meetings or whatever, to chime in and share our, our uh, sentiments, then I'm sure they'll be happy to listen. We are not the experts in running a television network. When I say we, I mean the community. Mm. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't own it. 
Kyle, you know, other networks don't seem to be going through this kind of toss up. I mean, at, at times it, it, you kind of wonder is, is BET on clearance or something like that? <laughs> You know, why is this even happening to BET? Or to put it in a more positive way, you know, um, how rare is this opportunity? Well, I would think that an asset on this scale, which has such a defined target audience, uh, is a rare find, which is why so many people, I think, have come to the fore to say, hey, listen, I would like to own this. But I think there's also a danger in, in allowing people who have a specific point of view as storytellers to also be the owners of a, of an, a media platform that means so much to so many. Again, I, I don't think there's any problem whatsoever with any of those who have come forward to say, I'd like to buy this. I don't think there's any problem that we, we run with any of them completing the transaction. But I do think that as storytellers, there's a limited point of view and as business owners, you might open yourself up to a more expanded perspective that comes from the entire diaspora. It's unfortunate that the one and only platform that speaks to our community's interest has the burden of carrying everybody's uh, perspective. But that's, in fact, what we're dealing with with BET. Yeah, and, and with that in mind, if, if something, and I think the idea is absolutely brilliant, if something like this doesn't happen, if, if it doesn't crystallize, where do you see the network going? And, and then how would that affect black entertainment uh, in, in general, especially with how they, how they sort of kind of don't value uh, what we bring to the table? Well, the, the thing I'm, I appreciate most about the time you're, you all are giving to this conversation is that there is a conversation happening. Mm -hmm. And so if the transaction ultimately doesn't um, consummate, I think it's okay because I think it's time that the conversation be had and perhaps whoever ultimately owns the platform will be more responsive to the community because the community has galvanized itself around this idea of, hey, we ought to have a stake in a platform that speaks to our interest. Even you know myself and those who have, who have um, applied you know for uh, an ownership interest in this asset all of us are trading on on the cultural contributions that come from our community and so i think it's, it, it's appropriate to give the community more of a stakeholder interest in that marketplace hey kyle to, to courtney's point you know if it doesn't work out with bet do you expect <clears throat> that your advocacy around this kind of model around ownership do you does NAACP uh, plan to continue to push folks in the media industry to consider this kind of ownership model? I mean, yeah, there are television networks, but there's also radio stations, there's streaming platforms, there's lots of room right. for this kind of model, no? We are fervently de dedicated to this principle, and I want to add the world of sports to the, the list of industries where I think we should start focusing our attention in this conversation about equity. I mean, if you own a home and you're paying your mortgage, over time, you are accruing more and more equity in that asset. If you want to pull some of that equity out and go start a business or go buy another asset, you're free to do that. If you want to sell that home, the first thing you're going to pull out of that is what you've put into it. Well, what we have put into what is referred to as mainstream culture needs to be recognized, acknowledged, and at some point it needs to be enumerated. Mm. Um, now, there's another word that people use sometimes when referring to these ideas, begins with the letter R, but that tends to shut down conversations. So the word I'm gonna stick with is equity. Indeed. Talk a little bit about how our soulmates, those are our viewers, can get involved in the conversation right now. Anything tangible they can do uh, right now as this is just a, a conversation for now? Most public discourse these days is driven through social media. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking forward to people reacting to this article and sharing their thoughts about the article um, and seeing what the community ultimately is. This is not a dictate from the NAACP. We're just kicking off a conversation to see if the people themselves wanna, wanna carry the idea further. They may have ideas that go way beyond anything we would, we would have considered. Our thanks to you, Kyle Bowser, the SVP yeah. of the Hollywood NAACP Bureau. Keep up the good work, brother, and we'll continue to spread the message. That's right, and keep getting into that good trouble. We appreciate your time today. My pleasure. Indeed.